Cyrano loved her. Loved her to the point where under the cloak of night, he spoke to Roxanne in behalf of the man she loved. Roxanne is on her balcony. Cyrano stands in the garden below. Your words tonight hesitate. Why? Through the warm summer gloom, they grope in darkness toward the light of you. My words, well aimed, find you more readily. My heart is open wide and waits for them. Too large a mark to miss. Moreover, yours fall to me swiftly. Mine more slowly rise. Yet not so slowly as they did at first. They have learned the way, and you have welcomed them. Am I so far above you now? So far? If you let fall upon me one hard word out of that height, you crush me. I'll come down. No. Stand you on the bench. Come nearer. No. And why so great a no? Let me enjoy the one moment I ever... My one chance to speak to you unseen. Unseen? Yes. Yes. Night making all things dimly beautiful. One veil over us both. You only see the darkness of a long cloak in the gloom. And I, the whiteness of a summer gown. You are all light. I am all shadow. How can you know what this moment means to me? If I was ever eloquent... You were eloquent. You have never heard till now my own heart speaking. Why not? Until now I spoke through... Yes? Through that sweet drunkenness you pour into the world out of your eyes. Oh, but tonight... Tonight I indeed speak for the first time. For the first time? Your voice even is not the same. How should it be? I have another voice tonight. My own, myself. Daring. Where was I? Forgive me. This is all sweet like a dream. Strange like a dream. How strange. Is it not so to be myself to you and have no fear of moving you to laughter? Laughter? Why? Because what am I... What is any man that he dare ask for you? Therefore my heart hides behind phrases. But poetry... Love hates that game of words. It is a crime to fence with life. I tell you there comes one moment once, and God help those who pass that moment by, when beauty stands looking into the soul with grave, sweet eyes that sicken at pretty words. If that be true, and when that moment comes to you and me... What words will you? All those. All those. All those that blossom in my heart, I'll fling to you armfuls of loose bloom. Love, I love beyond breath, beyond reason, beyond love's own power of loving. Your name is like a golden bell hung in my heart. And when I think of you, I tremble. And the bell swings and rings. Roxanne. Roxanne, along my veins, Roxanne. Yes, that is love. Yes, that is love. That wind of terrible and jealous beauty blowing over me, that dark fire, that music. Yet love seeketh not his own. Dear, you may take my happiness to make you happier, even though you never know I gave it you. Only let me hear, sometimes all alone, the distant laughter of your joy. I never look at you, but there's some new virtue born in me. Some new courage. Do you begin to understand a little? Can you feel my soul there in the darkness breathe on you? Oh, but tonight, now I dare say these things... I to you, and you hear them, it is too much. In my most sweet and reasonable dreams, I have not hoped for this. Now let me die having lived. It is my voice, mine, my own, that makes you tremble there in the green gloom above me, for you do tremble as a blossom among the leaves. You tremble, and I can feel all the way down along these jasmine branches, whether you will or no, the passion of you. Yes, I do tremble, and I weep, and I love you, and I am yours, 
And you have made me thus. Ah, Roxanne. I have won what I have won. The feast of love. And I am famished. Yet I have something here that is mine now and was not mine before I spoke the words that won her. Not for me. Kissing my words. My words. Upon his lips. Cyrano and Christian went off to war. And Cyrano wrote all Christian's letters to Roxanne for him. At the siege of Arras, Christian was killed. Roxanne, now a widow, withdrew to a convent where every Saturday Cyrano was wont to visit her and give her the news of the court. But one Saturday, Cyrano, having been ambushed and mortally wounded, was not on time. After 14 years, late for the first time. Yes, yes, maddening. I was detained by... Well? A visitor, most unexpected. Oh? It's an old friend of mine, at least. Uh, a very old acquaintance. Did you tell him to go away? Uh, for the time being, yes. I said, excuse me, this is Saturday. I have a previous engagement... One I cannot miss, even for you. Come back an hour from now. Your friend will have to wait. I shall not let you go till dark. Perhaps a little before dark. I must go. <sighs> the leaves. What color? Perfect Venetian red. Oh, look at them fall. Yes. They know how to die. A little way from the branch to the earth. A little fear of mingling with the common dust. And yet they go down gracefully. A fall that seems like flying. Melancholy, you? Why, no, Roxanne. <laughs> then let the leaves fall. Tell me now the court news. My gazette. Yes, uh, let me see. Uh -huh. uh, Saturday the 19th. The king fell ill after eight helpings of grape marmalade. His malady was brought before the court, found guilty of high treason, <laughs> whereupon his majesty revived. The royal pulse is now normal. Sunday the 20th. The queen gave a grand ball at which they burned... 763 wax candles. Monday. Nothing. Tuesday the 22nd. All the court has gone to Fontainebleau. Wednesday. The Comte de Fiesque spoke to Madame de Monglat. She said no. Thursday, Mancini was the Queen of France, or very nearly. Friday, La Mongla said yes. Saturday, the 20... Say, oh. He has fainted. Cyrano. What? What is it? No, no. No, no, it is nothing, truly. But... No, no, my old wound, sometimes, you know... My poor friend. Oh, no, it is nothing. It will soon be gone. There. It is gone. We all have our old wounds. I have mine here, under this faded scrap of writing. It is hard to read now. All but the blood and the tears. His letter. Did you not promise me that someday... That someday you would let me read it. His letter. You. You wish. I do wish it. Today. Here. May I open it? Open it and read. Farewell, Roxanne. 
because today I die. Aloud. I know that it will be today, my own dearly beloved, and my heart still so heavy with love I have not told, and I die without telling you. No more shall my eyes drink the sight of you like wine, never more with a look that is a kiss follow the sweet grace of you. How you read it, his letter. I remember now the way you have of pushing back a lock of hair with one hand from your forehead, and my heart cries out. His letter, and you read it. Cries out and keeps crying, farewell, my dear, my dearest. In a voice? My own heart's own, my own treasure. In such a voice? My love. As I remember hearing long ago. I am never away from you. Even now, I shall not leave you. In another world, I shall still be that one who loves you. Loves you beyond measure, beyond... How can you read now? Huh? It is dark. No. And all these 14 years, he has been the old friend who came to me to be amusing. Roxanne. It was you. No, no, Roxanne, no. And I might have known every time I heard you speak my name. No, it was not I. It was you. I swear. I understand everything now. The letters, that was you. No. And the dear, foolish words, that was you. No. And the voice in the dark, that was you. On my honor. And the soul, that was all you. I never loved you. Yes, you loved no, me. No, he loved you. Even now you love me. No. And why? So great a no. No, no, my own dear love. I love you not. How many things have died. And are newborn. Why were you silent for so many years? All the while, every night and every day, he gave me nothing. You knew that. You knew here in this letter, lying on my breast, your tears. You knew they were your tears. The blood was his. Why do you break that silence now, today? Why? Because... Oh, oh God. That faintness was that... Nothing. I did not finish my gazette. Saturday the 26th. An hour or so before dinner, Monsieur de Bergerac died foully murdered. What does he mean? Cyrano, what have they done to you? Struck down by the sword of a hero, let me fall. Steel in my heart and laughter on my lips. Yes, I said that once. How fate loves a jest. Behold me ambushed, taken in the rear... My battlefield a gutter, my noble foe, a lackey with a log of wood. It seems too logical. I have missed everything, even my death. Cyrano, wait. You need help. I, I'll get someone. No, no, do not go away. I may not still be here when you return. Look, they're going in to pray now. There is the bell. A little harmony is all I need. Listen. You shall not die. I love you. No, that is not in the story. You remember when Beauty said I love you to the beast that was a fairy prince? His ugliness changed and dissolved like magic. But you see, I am still the same. And I, I have done this to you. All my fault, mine. You, I know. On the contrary. I had never known womanhood and its sweetness, but for you, my mother did not love to look at me. I never had a sister. Later on, I feared the mistress with a mockery behind her smile. But you, because of you, I have had one friend, not quite all a friend. Across my life, one whispering, Silken gown. I never loved but one man in my life. And I have lost him twice. I would not have you mourn any the less that good, brave, noble Christian. But perhaps I ask you only this. When the great cold gathers around my bones, that you may give a double meaning to your widow's weeds and the tears you let fall for him... Maybe for a little 
my tears. Oh, my love. No, not here, not lying down. Let no one help me, no one. It is coming. I feel already shod with marble, gloved with lead. Let the old fellow come now. He shall find me on my feet, sword in hand. Cyrano. Ah, I can see him there, he grins. He is looking at my nose, that skeleton. What's that you say? Hopeless? Why, very well. But a man does not fight merely to win. No, no. Better to know one fights in vain. You there, who are you? A hundred against one. Ah, I know them now, my ancient enemies. Falsehood, there. There, prejudice. Compromise. Cowardice. What's that? No, surrender. No, never, never. Ah, you two vanity, I knew you would overthrow me in the end. No, I fight on, I fight on, I fight on. Yes, all my laurels you have riven away, and all my roses. Yet, in spite of you, there is one crown I bear away with me, and tonight when I enter before God, my salute shall sweep all the stars away from the blue threshold. One thing without stain, unspotted from the world, in spite of doom, mine own, and that is my white blue.